What's poppin' attack squad? We're gonna check out this why Jeffrey Dahmer and make kill. I, I think it's pretty simple, bro. Bro was a creep and he got killed. You feel me? It, 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 hey, but it's a nine and a half minute video, so hit that subscribe and I wrote 2K out by 121 Dumb. Just got a dumb react to NBA game if you wanna check those out. But let's get straight into it, man. From our investigation, we strongly feel this individual has been. It's involved. crazy how Jeffrey Dahmer off that Netflix. Documentaries like everywhere now, like, bro. I can't go on tw TikTok without seeing Jeffrey, Instagram, Twitter, like, bro, just everywhere. Imagine being a victim, like, a family of these victims, bro. Like, bro, you gotta see Jeffrey Dahmer's face again, type Other shit, bro. Sides, it's kind of fun. We've taken evidence like, out of the building to be examined. Why Jeffrey Dahmer's inmate killed him? The dust had settled in one of the it's most gut-wrenching cases in America. Bro, that was the moment the crazy. infamous Milwaukee cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences. And there's people out there trying to be like Jeffrey for Halloween. He was locked oh, up in the Columbia no. Correctional Institute. The victims and their families could at least take some form of respite, knowing that he'd suffer for long, or so they thought. Just over two years into his sentence, on the morning of the 28th of November, but I feel like killing someone. It's like an easy way out, even unless they suffer, bro. Like, oh, hey, YouTube relax. But like, like you know how people be getting like a death penalty and this and that. I feel like that's an easy way out, bro. Two other inmates. They lock them up 24, 23 and a half hours a day in a cell, bro. They're gonna go crazy. You feel me? Like, I seen the video the other day, El Chapo. Hey, just put their asses 23 and a half hours in a cell with no windows. Fuck like the windows. And they can go crazy, bro. Like that's into torture. Into a toilet block for cleaning duties. Dharma and one of the other inmates never walked out. What had just happened here? And who was the third inmate who walked out undetected by the guards? Backstory. To have been convicted of 15 counts of first-degree murder and receive a sentence of over 900 years in prison can only imagine the things Jeffrey Dahmer must have done. If there's one thing we can be sure of sometimes when the law is involved, it's that the consequence is usually commensurate with the crime, and you'll find that in Jeffrey's case as well. Dahmer committed his first murder when he was 18. He had been driving when 19-year-old Stephen Hicks, who was heading to a rock concert at Chippewa Lake Park, Ohio, decided to hitchhike with him. As they drove, Jeffrey brought up the idea of Stephen going with him. Just a bit. This is... This is the documentary. This is a clip from the drinking. Stephen told Jeffrey that he wanted to leave, but Jeffrey didn't want him to. It turned out that Jeffrey was hoping he would act on his feelings for Stephen. Seeing as he couldn't stop Stephen from leaving, Jeffrey used a 10 pound dumbbell to strike Stephen twice on the back of the head. Damn. As soon as Stephen passed out, Jeffrey used the bar of the dumbbell to strangle him. The next day, Damn. Jeffrey dismembered Stephen's corpse and buried the parts of his body in his backyard. But because he didn't want to leave the evidence behind, he dug up Stephen's body weeks after, peeled the flesh off the bones, and dissolved it in acid. He then flushed the output down the toilet before crushing the bone. Hey, one day with the serial killer, bro, they are smart as hell. They fucking... Like, bro, they begin the weird, like, how the hell did you get, bro? ...with a sledgehammer and spreading them around his backyard like mulch. They After Jeffrey killed Stephen, he went on crazy. to kill his next four victims. 25-year-old Stephen Tuomi, 14-year-old James Doxtator, 22-year-old Richard Guerrero, and 24-year-old Anthony Sears. This was between 1987 and 1988. In yeah. the years of 1989 and 1991, Jeffrey met and murdered his remaining 12 victims. And his last victim was 25-year-old Joseph Bredhoft. Damn. Jeffrey's MO for all of his victims were in this order strangulation dismemberment and decapitation but as they say everything comes to an end in jeffrey's case he just wasn't expecting it his arrest and trial to get rid of the dead bodies in his apartment jeffrey bought a large tank filled it with acid and threw the torsos of his victims into it he also cooked the dismembered body parts and constantly ate them hence the alias Whoa. milwaukee cannibal a few years into jeffrey's that crime so spree nasty. a man named tracy edwards came dangerously close to becoming one of his many victims oh, tracy? save for the fact that he followed his instincts tracy and jeffrey met in July of 1991, and as usual, Jeffrey convinced episode, Tracy to this. follow him to his apartment. Tracy said that when he got there, he sensed that something was off. He was fortunate enough to get out of the apartment and run for so dear Tracy. life. While running down the street, he stopped a police car and told the police officer how he felt something wasn't right about Jeffrey. This the fact that they kind of didn't even believe him, but they went to the, they went back. And they're always gonna let him go until I seen the pictures, bro. That is tough. It's not the beginning of the end for the 31 year old killer. The police officer Tracy spoke to called for backup, and together with other cops who responded to his call, he raided Jeffrey's apartment. To their sheer horror, the authorities found several pictures of dismembered body parts all over the apartment. About four or five decapitated heads in Jeffrey's freezer and dismembered body parts in both pots and pans. They also found in the large tank the torsos Jeffrey had dissolved using acid. Jeffrey was immediately arrested and taken into police custody. His day 
of reckoning had come. But things would only get worse for him from then on. After six weeks of being in police custody, Dharma finally confessed to his crimes via pages of writing. During his trial, he pled guilty by reason of insanity, but he was deemed legally sane at his trial. At the end of his largely publicized trial on February 17, 1992, Jeffrey Dahmer was convicted of 15 murders and was sentenced to 15 terms of life imprisonment. The presiding judge ruled that Jeffrey would live out his days in the Columbia Correctional nice. Institution, Portage, Wisconsin. Life behind bars. The nature of Jeffrey's crimes placed him in people's bad books. As a result, he was placed in protective custody and held in isolation. In the same vein, he was never let out of his cell except when he was bound. After a year of being held in the isolation cell, Jeffrey appealed to prison officials to move him to a different unit, stating that he had been cooperative and never caused any trouble. His appeal was heard and he was moved to a unit for inmates with emotional and mental challenges in this unit. So, uh, Jeffrey was able to relate with other inmates. He started attending classes and even signed up for work duties. Along the line, Dharma met a prison minister, Roy Ratcliffe, whom he reportedly often shared remorseful remarks about the murders he had committed with. Around this time, Jeffrey also started going to chapel. In May of 1994, Jeffrey sought to be baptized and he was baptized by Ratcliffe in a water tub in prison. After his baptism, he began to share with other inmates the correspondences he'd been getting concerning his newfound faith. According to several reports, it was during this time that Jeffrey began to display certain behaviors that other inmates didn't appreciate. He often made jokes about cannibalism, saying that he was going to bite them. Dharma also had a knack for molding his- <laughs> Why would you say- Bro, it's not a joke if you've actually done it, bro. Like, do it. Bro, I'm about to bite you, bro. Like, what? Hey, no it joke. Look like dismembered body parts. As if that wasn't bad enough, he would proceed to cover the food with ketchup to complete the look. While some reports say he ate the food Afterwards, others say Jeffrey left these rather disturbing pieces of food art lying around for the other inmates to find. Whatever the case, the inmates didn't like this sick game Dharma was playing, but there was a particular inmate who took his dislike to the extreme, and this inmate was none other than Christopher Scarver. Christopher Scarver. Scarver was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just like Jeffrey. After he dropped out of high school and got kicked out of the house by his mother, he joined a youth conservation corps program where he secured a position as a trainee carpenter. During the program, a supervisor reportedly told Scarver that he was sure to become a full-time employee as soon as he completed the program. Yeah. However, that did not happen. So, on June 1st, 1990, an angry Scarver made his way to the office of the training program, declaring that the program owed him money. One of the people he happened to meet that day was his former boss, Stephen Lohman. When he asked Stephen for his money, Scarver said that Stephen gave him $15. This reportedly provoked Scarver to the point that he shot Stephen in the head. Oh. After Scarver fired the first shot at Stephen, he went out of control and ended up shooting the wounded man three more times. Damn. Still armed with a murder weapon, Scarver demanded that the manager write him a check for $3,000. He then proceeded to steal the manager's credit card before heading to his pregnant girlfriend's apartment. The police oh. found Scarver outside his girlfriend's apartment hours later, and since the murder oh, weapon was crazy. still in his possession, the authorities savage. had him arrested. By the time of Scarver's sentencing, his girlfriend had already given birth. Scarver was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes in 1992, the same as Jeffrey. But according to Scarver, despite the few similarities that they shared, he stayed away from Jeffrey while in prison. Aside from the fact that Scarver didn't like Jeffrey due to the gruesomeness of his crimes, he also didn't like how he was usually causing trouble. While speaking on the issue, Scarver pointed out that many of the other inmates shared his sentiment, and he even recalled how a fellow inmate, Osvaldo Dorothy, had attempted to cut Jeffrey's throat with a razor he hid inside a toothbrush. Despite his obvious dislike for the serial killer, Scarver pretty much didn't mind Jeffrey, and did his best to stay away from him, up until 1994. What changed, you ask? You're about to find yeah, out. On changed? November 28, 1994, Scarver, Jeffrey, and another inmate, Jesse Anderson, had been assigned to clean the bathrooms in the prison's gym. Oh, Scarver said that while they were cleaning, someone poked him at the back, and when he turned to look, he found both Jeffrey and Jesse laughing under their breath. Although this greatly angered Scarver, he didn't do anything and decided to wait until Jeffrey went to the locker room. Moments later, Scarver removed a metal bar from a piece of exercise equipment in the prison weight room and followed Jeffrey into the locker room. In the locker room, Scarver bludgeoned 34-year-old Jeffrey Dahmer to the brink of death. He then went after Jesse and did the same to him. Jeffrey died as he was being rushed to the... Oh. Oh, he got a boat there. Oh, y'all yeah. Yeah, like, poked the wrong bear, my boy. Y'all messed with the wrong one. Y'all was laughing at the wrong one. Hey, cool. damn. Well, Jesse died two days later. When Scarver was I like Jeffrey was having a good time, though. He was laughing. He over there making jokes and shit. Hey, what kind of prison is that? My boy was living. 
why he did what he did. He claimed that he was the chosen one and that he had to do it. Scott nice. also claimed that the correctional officers knew that he didn't like Jeffrey and that they intentionally had them work together so that he could kill Dharma. Of course, there is no proof to back up these outrageous yeah, you claims. Can, you can't Regardless prove that, of whether but... or not the correctional officers intentionally... You can't prove that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. Up. The deed was done, and Jeffrey Dharma had died after serving three years of what was supposed to be a life sentence. Following the brutal murders, Scarver was catapulted into the spotlight as he received a lot of commendations and backlash from the general public. While some people said he was still a criminal, a greater number applauded him for getting rid of Jeffrey Dahmer, whom they had always thought deserved to die. Some accounts even state that Scarver received thank you notes from the families of some of Jeffrey's victims, nice. the aftermath. While the court of public opinion did its thing, the truth remained that Scarver had committed cold-blooded murder and needed to be punished for his crimes. The case was brought That's before weak. a court of law, and in addition to the life sentence Scarver was already serving, he was given two more life sentences. Scarver is still alive today. He's currently in a medium security prison in Wisconsin, where he self-publishes poetry. He has been spending his free time writing songs, music compositions, nice. short stories, poetry, and prison policy Good proposals, Scarver. as well as creating original art, according to his Amazon bio. Currently, Scarver has multiple poetry books for sale, including 2015's The Child Left Behind, and has managed to remain in contact with his son through it all. The two have reportedly maintained a good relationship all these years. In addition to being a published writer, Scarver also wishes to attend college to study mechanical and electrical engineering through his American Prisoner Repatriation Act initiative. Needless to say, Scarver is dedicated to making the most out of life, despite being confined to a prison cell. And that brings us to the end of the video. To check out other videos like this- That's wild, bro. So he didn't kill him because he was- He killed him because he didn't like him in the beginning. Like, he didn't like him from the start, but- and they was laughing at the wrong one. They got signed with the wrong person. They posted the wrong person. But if you enjoyed that, subscribe. And I wrote two care about one super one dummy. But we out, yeah.